Welcome to Two Day Pass. My name is Scott and a like on the video will help me out tremendously. There's Hendon Driving Test Center. That's where you'll start your driving test with your amazing driving examiner. And then he'll ask you where your car is parked. You'll proceed to follow you to the car like a stalker. And then you'll get in the car where we'll say, hello, how are you? <laughs> One second while I adjust. There we go. And then he'll ask you to start your car and go for a little drive. So when you actually leave the driving test center, just do it with caution as it is quite a narrow exit here. We're gonna go do a complete route at Hendon. I'm gonna show you the double roundabouts, apex corner possibly, all these little bits and pieces that you need to know. Take care when you exit the test center to look around the bush, the George Bush, on the left hand side there because it's very hard to see again just pointing out the triangle there on the left on the pole as these are pedestrian crossings okay so it's quite important that you know that these paved sections here are potentially pedestrian crossings with that guy being parked like this vehicle parking it can obstruct your view of the actual road so make sure you have a good look maybe give space like this if necessary for people to actually move out the way which will increase your visibility there's no one here at this crossing so it's safe for us to keep going just take care the speed limit here is 10 miles an hour and you've got these horrible speed bumps here i hate bump bumps i hate bumps horrible bumps but i love that car Right, okay, at the end of the road, we're gonna turn right this time. So mirror, mirror, signal right. If you did check out the last video, you would have noticed I went left. I did do apex corner on that video actually. So if you want to go check that video out, we're turning right on apex corner, which is the huge roundabout. Very, very difficult. Must know if you're doing your test at Mill Hill or Hendon. So we're just leaving Hendon test center here, but the routes are very similar for both test centers. This road is incredibly busy. So I'm just waiting my turn here. When there's an opportunity, like you would take if you were a pedestrian so you'd walk out into the road i'd walk out now now's the time to drive i'm using quite a lot of acceleration if you're doing this in a manual car my advice is don't just start in automatic make your life easier more pleasurable as all cars will be automatic from 2030. yes all the major leading re what do you call them manufacturers of cars will actually be manufacturing automatic only because all cars are going to be electric so do not put yourself through the pain of manual lessons unless you really need to i'm just trying to save you time and money and actually make your driving safer and more pleasurable so i'm not preaching automatic you don't need it don't do it at the roundabout turn right mirror mirror signal right so interior mirror right mirror signal right position into the right lane i'm going to take the third exit on this roundabout turning right towards the raf museum i believe it is an aeroplane museum here this is the back side of hendon test center no one on the right hand side at the roundabout that's the side i'd need to stop and give priority like that van's doing for me because i'm on his right past the first exit past the second exit mirror mirror signal to the left and there we are taking the third exit bear in mind these roundabouts and zebra crossings on the exit take the next road on the left interior mirror exterior left mirror signal left and as we come round, look zebra crossing there's a man there will he cross no he's walking past the crossing however very difficult to see him as i was coming up to the turn so there you go really important you've just completed the roundabout and a turn both of those had zebra crossings on the exits so do take caution not only to do your mirrors do your signal do your position do your speed do your look and when you look you're looking for pedestrians that might use look at this what's in front of us pedestrian crossings we talked about this as we exited the test center we had a few pedestrian crossings that weren't zebra crossings but they worked in a similar fashion where we had the road to change color or there's some kind of 
identifying marks there to mark out potentially where a zebra crossing or p pedestrian crossing in the case of the test center is. So it's really important as it's too easy and multiple times people fail their driving test. This is super common. I don't actually see it on the top 10 list of people failing, but from my experience, I know lots of people, they fail to see a zebra crossing and they fail. Can you see this roundabout here? Make sure you observe to the right. Make sure that you show your examiner that you've seen that crossing, sorry, that junction. If you do not slow down gradually and look to the right, this is the number one reason why people fail their driving test for observations. Now, if your examiner doesn't give you directions, you follow the road ahead, they will tell you this at the beginning of your test. So if your examiner tells you the whole speech at the beginning, make sure to follow the road ahead unless road markings or signs state otherwise. If I need you to turn left or right, I will give you directions in good time. So they're gonna be quiet here. You see this roundabout? I'm not saying any directions. Slowing down, checking, good visibility there, nice and open, showing the examiner that I have identified the junction by myself. I'm not waiting for the examiner to tell me at the roundabout, I've seen it. Now, if you're an instructor or if you are a student, there's a very good game to play, and that is call out the next junction. Identify where the next junction is. So this will lead into more independence for your students and help you to learn faster as you're being more independent. At the roundabout, turn right, mirror, mirror, signal, roughly five to 10 car lengths from the junction. I position towards the right hand side of my lane. Positioning into the right is also another way of telling people where you're going. So it is regarded as a signal. So definitely bear that in mind. Position, very important. So if you're not signaling, if you've got the correct position, this can actually be a signal and you can kind of use that to your benefit, because if you forget the signal, well, at least you position correctly, this can work in your benefit. I'll show you that now. Mirror, mirror, signal right. See how I position nice and close to this island here on the right, giving plenty of space for any vehicles that might want to turn left. And that, if I wasn't signaling now, would also tell people by my position where I'm going to go next. The road is clear, I would walk out, I make my way to the center of this road before I start to steer the steering wheel. Now, if you turn too early, this can be a driver fault. So make sure if the road is clear, you make your way to the center of the new road that you're turning onto, then turn the steering wheel. Do not turn before you reach the center of the road. Okay, so now look at this. I'm checking my mirrors lots of times, interior and exterior, to the change of direction that I'm going to be doing. This is the most important mirror checks. So make sure that you do lots of practice with your instructor to check your mirrors to the left, move in, check your mirrors to the right, move out, and you want to do this before, mirror, mirror, signal left, take the next road on the left. You want to do this before you actually move the steering. Don't look and steer. See, identify the hazard that's coming up. See that you'll need to change direction early. Check the mirrors early, change direction early. Very, very good habit to have as a driver and the best drivers will just do this without even noticing. At the end of the road, turn left, mirror, mirror, signal left, roughly five to 10 car lengths away. You may notice I'm doing it a little bit later because I'm giving lots of advice here, trying to help you pass your driving test first time for free, guys for free <laughs> all right you can watch other people make silly mistakes on the driving test or mock tests and stuff we have that on the channel as well so if you want to go there and see it actually happening to people as they're doing a mock test brilliant but these videos will also give you lots and lots of value as you're getting non-stop instruction from a grade a driving instructor for over 10 years guys so i've pretty much i'm not gonna fit through there so i'm gonna wait here 
check my interior mirror to see who's behind me. And now I'm looking through the vehicles in front. Can I see any oncoming vehicles? Yes, but it's too late. I'm in this gap now. So I'm coming in nice and slow. This is a very interesting situation. And I've got a car behind me. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm leaving space for this vehicle to move out of my way so I can keep going and the car behind me can keep going. Now imagine you're on your driving test. What kind of decision would you have made? Would you have been looking through the windscreens of the vehicles in front of you, the parked vehicles, to try and assess if there was oncoming traffic? Or would you have just been leaning and looking around the vehicles? Either or is okay. But all of it together, all these tips, all this advice, is just gonna help you pass your driving test first time. You've got this good knowledge and you start to practice it on your driving lessons with your instructor, it will also save you time and money. Because you've got the knowledge, you can start to ask questions to your driving instructor or even just start to apply this into your lessons, providing you can remember this material. And then when you know it and you start to use it, then it becomes a habit. When it's a habit, it's something that will just happen without you even needing to think about it. Once you reach this level of driving, it's almost certain that you're going to pass your driving test first time. If you're not to this level of driving, it's not that you're not ready for a driving test and it doesn't mean that you won't pass, but it doesn't give you the added extra if you like. At the end of the road, turn right, mirror, mirror, signal right. We are on Orange Hill Road and I can't see, so, oh, now I can. So I've creeped out, this is called a creep. I've actually gone past the giveaway lines now. I've not affected the traffic because there was a parked vehicle on my right. If you do want to go and look at the channel, do it after this video, please, and you'll see I've got actually, I've got a 360 camera on some of the videos, so I can actually show you what's on the right now, but we're doing this more basic with just two cameras here, no 360 camera. If you enjoy the 360 camera videos and you enjoy all of this stuff that I try to help you with, um, please put it down in the comments below because it helps me. So anything you like, anything you don't like, anything you want to see more of, please put it down in the comments below. Okay, at the roundabout, I'm gonna go straight ahead, second exit. Is there anyone on my right? I'm doing the appropriate speed. I can look, I can think about it, I can talk. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Position to the left. Relax the steering wheel a little. This will help you to stay positioned to the left and glide you out or spiral you out to the left-hand side when you leave the roundabout. It's very important that you relax the steering as you get towards the exit to the roundabout and this will help you to position correctly and have good lane discipline so that your examiner doesn't say that you were cutting into other traffic or leaving too much space and then moving over. Mm -mm. We're safe, we're positioned in between the lines, one meter from the curb, we're definitely in the left lane. This is correct driving procedure and it's very, very safe. We don't want the examiners to feel like if they pass you, you might have an accident within a couple of days. They want to know that they're going to pass you. You're going to be a safe driver on the road. This is what the examiners are looking for. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come down towards the end of this road where we're going to have double roundabouts. Now, double roundabouts are super complicated. What we need to do is make an assessment for the first roundabout to put us in the best position for the next roundabout depending on the directions we're going interior mirror right mirror change direction around the parked car double roundabouts are coming up and I'm gonna go right at the first roundabout left at the second roundabout so where are the roundabouts we're scanning the road ahead we're looking for information oh there's a sign follow the sign to Mill Hill now on your driving test you will be doing 20 minutes of independent drive and quite commonly you can be asked to follow signs you will be asked to use sat nav so do practice on both parts of independent drive with your driving instructor mirror interior mirror right exterior mirror position right there's no one on the zebra crossing and i'm in the correct lane all the vehicles on my right hand side are all turned now i'm going into left lane mirror mirror signal left 
position into left lane, check traffic on right, there's an approaching vehicle from the right. It stopped, so I'm gonna go. I'm not too sure why it stopped, but it stopped. Obviously, take caution, because you get zebra crossings. That wasn't a zebra crossing. However, it's very common to have a pedestrian crossing, zebra crossing, on the exit to the roundabout. So not only am I thinking about my mirrors, my signals, my position, my speed, looking to see if there's traffic, assessing the first junction to put me in the best position for the next junction. Once I've completed all of this two times over, I then got to take into consideration that there might be a pedestrian crossing on the exit to the roundabout. Now there's no relief. Lots of practice, perfect practice makes perfect. And now I'm coming towards another roundabout. Would this be Apex Corner? I'm not sure. Let's see if there's a sign. Before that, we have a zebra crossing. No one using zebra crossing. And there is no sign, but this is Apex Corner. I'm turning right to Tot. So if you see Tot in the road, that's where I'm going. Third exit turning right. Now, this is what we're gonna look for as we go around the roundabout. Try to see where the road markings are for Tot, which I think is Tot Ridge, Totten Ridge. Um, I know I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. However, TOT is the abbreviation. That's what I'm looking for, and that's where I'm going. So now, we have no traffic light here at the entrance, but there are traffic lights midway through the roundabout. So we have to take those into consideration. Just like the zebra crossing on the last mini roundabout, we might have to stop for this traffic light at the middle part of the roundabout now if you can see ahead there's so much traffic coming from the right there's four lanes of traffic on this roundabout huge very busy and semi controlled by traffic lights can you see tot on the road ahead if you're looking very very closely you might just about see it it's not the very right lane, ladies and gentlemen. It's the second to right lane. So as I'm going now, I've got a big gap of traffic. See, I'm checking my left side because of the van next to me. He's being an idiot, right? But this is my lane. It's not his lane, okay? So I'm going into the lane, but I'm watching to see him very, very closely. And I just realized Tot Ridge is that way. But this is the best lane to use to go to the third exit. So the top part is important. Look for that, go for that marking, if you can make your way to that marking. As you can see, I did have the van that was trying to go into that section, watching the road here on the right, mirror, mirror, signal left. If it's clear, we make our way all the way to the left lane. We're on a dual carriageway now. We're gonna build our speed to the speed limit. What is the speed limit? Keep looking for signs. It's a 50 mile an hour road. I'm doing 40. I can overtake, mirror, mirror, signal right. I'm going 42 miles an hour now, 46, 47, 48. Look at that, lovely, yeah? At the roundabout, turn right, third exit, okay? Because I'm overtaking, I'm using this lane. On your driving test, I would probably just stay in the left lane. It depends how slowly the traffic's going. If you can overtake, you use the right lane. If you're turning right, you use the right lane, and I'm doing both. Mirror, mirror, signal right. See the right only arrow? That's me, I'm turning right. This one's got some nice markings here. Can you see them in front? Red traffic lights are your friends. So when you're stopped at a red traffic light, use this time to your benefit. Look ahead, see the road markings in the middle of the road. Can you see them? Yeah, brilliant, nice road markings. They're gonna guide you around the roundabout. I'm past the first exit, interior mirror, left mirror. Gonna take the third exit, coming up towards the second exit, interior mirror, left mirror. This is where I start to signal left. Now I really want to start to spiral out to the middle of the road at this section. I'm checking my left mirror. Seems like the car's giving me some space. I checked over my shoulder there, did you see that? My signal's on. Looking over my shoulder allows me to assess this gap better. You see that again? I'm doing it again. And I can see that white car behind me clearly. I can see there's enough space. They've seen my signal. Very important, you must always signal when you exit the roundabout. Take the next road on the left. Mirror, mirror, signal left turning left, 
nice and smooth. We're on a high street back there, so there could be plenty of pedestrians here. So you just want to take care to have a good look. See what's coming up. Oh, there's a bus. The bus is signaling, but he's slowing down. Do you see that? Do you see the signal? That's warning us that he might come out. That's why he's put that signal on. But what I did is I looked at the speed of the vehicle. So no matter what vehicle you have towards you, let's take this next one. Look at the speed of the vehicle. Is it slowing down? Is it speeding up? And what we want to do is we want to do the opposite to what they're doing. So if they're going fast towards us, we start to slow down. If they're coming slow towards us, we can start to speed up. And by assessing the speed, we'll give you the best way of assessing whether it's safe for you to drive out into the road or not now on a downhill i did this road on a previous video hold the brakes so if you've seen both videos you'll know what to do for downhills it's always good to go over material again and again and again checking the right mirror as i've come out over the center lines i need to because there's parked cars mirror mirror signal left i'm turning left at the end of this road now when you pass a parked vehicle like I just did, right, left, right, minimum checks at any uh, any junction. When you pass a parked vehicle like I did as you're coming towards the end of the road or just driving on the road, how far away from the parked vehicles must you keep? If you answered one meter, you would be correct, which is roughly the width of a door. This is quite a tricky assessment to make when you're traveling at higher speeds. So when you have less space, less speed which will allow you to assess the gap you have from the left hand side this works so good and it's the only way for you to start to learn and be very accurate with your distances from any hazards on the left whether that's the pavement the bicycle or parked cars the list goes on we must keep that discipline a lot of time people fail for clearance to obstructions what this means is they get too close to park car too close to the curb or if you have width restrictions you might get too close to one of the sides at the width restrictions at the roundabout turn right mirror mirror signal right pedestrian on the crossing obviously need to wait once she's actually made it all the way to the other side i can start to cross the crossing if it's two separate crossings because there's an island in the middle i just need to wait till the pedestrian reaches the middle part second roundabout i promised you double roundabouts here we go so we turn right and now we're going straight i've kept the signal on i've reached the middle and i've gone slightly on the circle slightly on the circle see this pedestrian crossing i only waited for her to reach the middle because there was an island in the middle two separate crossings i didn't need to wait for her to go all the way to the opposite side of the road only till she reached the middle section and then it was okay for me to go so that's really nice we have our double roundabouts there working slightly different go on the circle it's <clears throat> excuse me this will avoid you from going around the circle and into a car and causing an accident because there's two lanes they're very squashed if you try to steer around that white circle in front you're more than likely going to crash into any car that might be on your left hand side so it's safer and it's necessary we go slightly on the white circle and then we had our zebra crossing at the exit Less space, less speed, I'm holding the brake. Not only is it a downhill, 18 miles an hour, 16 miles, 15 miles an hour, but it allows me to see this gap here on the right, allows me to assess this gap here on the left. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna turn left at the traffic lights. So mirror, mirror, signal left. And then we're gonna follow the dual carriageway back to the driving test center where we will be finished. Now on your driving test, you will be asked to pull over and stop on the left at least three times. This is to assess that you know where a safe place or convenient place is to pull over and stop on the left. Look for lampposts or trees or poles of any sort in the distance because there will be raised curb next to trees and poles and lampposts. So it's a good way of identifying a safe or convenient place in the distance. Then you'll be asked to drive away. Actually, I need this middle lane here because we're going to be going towards central London. Okay. Um, 
and then you'll be assessed on your ability to drive away after you've pulled in to stop and what the examiners are looking for is that you do this safely by checking all the way around the vehicle if it's necessary at least to the right side because as you move off this would be the most dangerous side if you're parked on the left moving out into the right into traffic this is the most dangerous side so we need to check the blind spot make sure you always signal when you drive away always signal when you pull over to stop for your driving test you cannot go wrong yes other people might tell you sometimes signal sometimes don't signal but literally if you always do it it's easier to remember you'll get into a good habit it's actually a safer thing to do as well and you will not get marked down for it on your driving test if you're going for a higher standard of driving as in becoming a driving instructor and on from there you will get marked down but for a regular driving test you must signal when you drive away you must signal when you pull in I can't stress that enough as I've had too many students fail for not signaling when they pull over to stop and there's a car following them so that car has no idea they're gonna pull over and stop fail serious fault for signaling mirror mirror signal right I'm gonna go turning right at the next traffic lights Waited for that vehicle to pass me. I checked my mirrors before, but I didn't signal. Notice how I'm checking my blind spot. It's literally just a glance, a second look over my shoulder, just to make absolutely sure I'm comfortable with doing it. It makes me feel more confident and safe. You don't need to do it for your driving test, but it's definitely a good habit to have. So as you can see from these videos, you're not only getting advice to help you to pass your driving test first time, but I'm actually giving you more skill sets here so if you're changing lanes on a dual carriageway or a motorway and you're going across multiple lanes it can be very beneficial to check your blind spot only if you feel comfortable with doing this but definitely something that you want to start to do either towards the end of getting ready for your driving test or after you've passed and another good place to do this is when you exit a roundabout like you saw me doing earlier that way I'll be absolutely certain with the distances between me and the vehicles that I might be crossing in front of and also if there's any vehicles that I didn't manage to see in my mirrors blind spots like a motorbike as an example and looking over your shoulders will actually allow you to see these vehicles so you're gonna be a very very aware driver and you'll have so much more information so that you know what you need to do to stay safe and keep your car and other people on the road safe so you know if you're a family person you've got kids in the car you want to have these kind of added extras um, of so I'm just looking for the entrance to the car park for the it's here mirror mirror signal right coming towards the center line positioning towards the center line nice and close to the center line person in front of me just pushed out in front of oncoming traffic and me so I held back, just let them do the thing. The lady there has looked at me, she's seen my signal, she knows where I'm going. So not only are the signals gonna benefit other road users, but they're also gonna benefit pedestrians. I hate speed bumps. Okay, so we're back at the test center, more oh, speed bumps, here we go again oh lovely thank you very much for that right speed limit here is 10 you heard it beep we're back to these little paved sections here which are considered to be pedestrian crossings or zebra crossings so look i've got this man here holding his water bottle and um, what is he doing is there anyone on the other side no he's not really doing anything is he i'm going straight the van has to give way to me he has give way lines so i'm proceeding showing everybody that i'm a confident driver show my examiner i know that he has to give way to me mirror mirror signal left and then you got this guy here just pulling out in front of you like i said very narrow entrance okay or exit so when you go in and out here really nice and smooth look out for people and then you'll know it's safe now you might be asked to do your reverse bay parking here at the beginning of your test or end of your test. So you take your reference point and then you adjust your steering full lock to the side that you need to go. Uh, use your camera if you have your camera on your car, which we have, which helps me to see the lines. I've got little mirrors on the side of my car. I can see the lines and those. I know I'm in the line, I know I'm fine, I know I'm done. I've been Scott, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Any comments or questions, put them down in this section down below. And stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.